Apple maggot is a temperate fly, uh, Dipdra, native to eastern North America. Um, the apple maggot and related flies are identified by their distinctive wing bars. Apple maggot is native host is hawthorn, and in the mid-1860s it was found to infest commercial cultivars of apples. And the hosts in <coughs> North Central Washington here are apple, crab apple, native and ornamental hawthorn. Pears are not a host for the apple maggot in the Pacific Northwest. They are in other regions of the country. Okay, the fly is about the size of a house fly, quarter inch or so. Uh, dark red eyes, black thorax, white dorsal patch, clear wings with a distinctive wing barring, identifying the apple maggot from other Ragolitas flies. Okay, now here's a graph of uh, adult fly emergence. This is all based on a degree day model, so, but you can see typically it's towards the middle or late part of July that uh, the adults begin to emerge, and then as temperatures increase during the summer, they have a sharp uh, rate of emergence, and then tapers off towards the end of uh, August and, and very little back in, and down into September. And the importance of knowing when the adult flies are present is because they are what's targeted for control with pesticides before the eggs are deposited underneath the skin of the fruit. Once that fruit has been, uh, had, eggs have been uh, deposited underneath the skin, they're impervious to pesticides. So you have to control the adult flies. The, the larvae are about a quarter of an inch long, pretty white with dark mouth hooks. It's there's the feeding, there's the, the maggot and the typical feeding. They mine tunnel around in the fruit. The fruit gets rotten and soft and you can tell from the outside it's, it kind of looks kind of crinkled. Unlike the codling moth, which has one entrance hole, uh, goes directly to the core, feeds in the core until the larva is mature and then it can exit out that hole or it can eat its way out another hole. Sometimes it will go down the calyx. And, but you can tell the codling moth, they're larger, they have the distinctive dark head capsule and the distinctive feeding um, pattern. Okay, so uh, two to seven weeks for larva to develop. The larva usually exit the fruit after the fruit has fallen to the ground. Once the larva has exited the fruit, it burrows down a couple inches into the ground where they pupate. And <clears throat> Later on, we're going to talk about this a little bit, uh, what the quarantine will mean to property owners and um, the green waste stream. But you can see because the uh, larva burrows down, pupates in the soil, that the soil is contaminated underneath a host tree. So that's why we won't be able to transport soil out of the quarantine. Pupa overwinter in the ground until the following summer, and one complete generation per season, um, the pupa resemble a grain of wheat. Apple maggot is a member of the Ragolitas genus, which are a bunch of fruit flies, and they are very well known for basically looking the same for the most part, but genetically they can host switch very easily. Um, so Ragolitas used to be on just the native hawthorns and sometime in the 1800s on the east coast it switched over to also eat the crab apples and apples that the European settlers had brought with them. Um, and so by the 1860s it was being reported as an agricultural pest. So probably it could have been called the hawthorn fly but apple maggot apparently sounds cool. Um, anyway, it didn't become a problem in this area until 1979, a homeowner in Portland reported it to the Oregon Department of Agriculture and was like, what is this? It's in my apples. And Oregon went, oh, Washington, you may want to look for this. Uh, and unfortunately, we then pretty much immediately found it. So it had probably been in the area longer than we had suspected. Uh, basically, in the early days of our program, the more traps we put out, the more flies we found which was pretty much just, we started putting out more traps in areas where we're like, well, maybe it's out here. Yes, yes it was. 
Um, so Spokane Valley ended up being fairly well infested. Um, it was later found pretty much up and down the I-5 corridor. Uh, humans spread these fairly easily, which is going to be a theme <laughs> the rest of this. Uh, anyway, in 1985, a control containment program pretty much ended when they found it in the native hawthorns all along the streams, which ended that program because it's impossible to control once it gets into those areas. Um, it does, however, remain in limited range in eastern Washington, and that's mostly due to our program and the great support that we've had <coughs> with a lot of the county pest boards who do pretty much all of the control work for us. We're the ones that do the survey and tell them where it is. They go out and spray. Um, so that cooperation has been very successful along with the cooperation of industry and a lot of homeowners. All right, so what does our survey look like? We put out about 10 to 11,000 traps every year. Those are individual trap sites. We visit each trap site every two to four weeks, all summer long. Um, so quarantines get extended frequently based on our survey results. Um, basically, the main thing is if we find two life stages, so adult, and a pupa or a larva. Um, that means that there's a reproducing population and if it's expected to continue. So once it gets into the native hawthorns and riparian zones, you can't control it. It's expected to continue in that area. That's pretty much when we quarantine an area. So regulated commodities include apples and crab apples, um, cherries and pears, all of those are except for commercial fruit, popcorn fruit, plum, prune, and quince. Now, everything on here except the crab apples, apples, and hawthorn are all secondary hosts that have only been recorded from the eastern United States. Since all of those things can be found in municipal solid waste, that is also regulated. Same for yard debris, organic feedstocks, organic materials, and agricultural wastes. Um, so those are kind of the things you need to be aware of. Can't be moved out of the quarantine area um, unless it's commercial fruit. Um, so our goal as Washington State Department of Agriculture is obviously to support agriculture. But there's two other main themes that we work on. Those two are environmental protections and consumer protections. Abomatic is kind of part of all three of those. We are obviously supporting the commercial apple industry in the state, um, but also importantly, people don't really want maggots in their apples, so we found, it's shocking I know. Um, but there's also invasive species that we can't control because they're mm -hmm. loose in our environment and to control them would actually do far greater harm than anything else. Um, and that's partly why we have the quarantines when we have them because we are unwilling to go out and basically disrupt our riparian native habitats uh, to try to get rid of one species. We produce about $2.5 billion just in apples and apple products every year. Um, why apple maggot is so important and codling moth isn't. Codling moth is the number one apple pest worldwide. It's found everywhere, except maybe Taiwan. They claim they don't have it in their dozen acres of apples. Um, apple maggot, on the other hand, is still only found in the United States and parts of Canada. Basically, nowhere else in the world wants it, and understandably so. Um, therefore, it is a huge export issue considering that we export 30% of the apple crop that Washington grows. Um, so, how can you help as a homeowner? Well, you know, do your sprays if you have an apple tree, try to control your apple maggot, but more importantly, you know, don't move your restricted items, especially don't move homegrown fruit off of, out of the quarantine area. If your neighbor is in the quarantine area, you can give her apples, but if they're outside, please don't. 